This is Leap. It's at the mouth of the Bewley River in Hampshire. It was an ancient Roman port. But my family have lived here over 200 years. I've lived here about 72. And frankly, it's hardly changed at all. My main occupation in life now is wardening our local bird sanctuaries, Seagull Island and Needsall Beach. But now I do most of it from home and I'm equipped with a telescope and a telephone so that I can see everything from here. In fact, I can see more sometimes than from the river when the tide's down. So this is a great advantage. James Fenner, he is appointed as the chief warden for this area. Morning, Joe. Morning, James. How are you, well, son? I'm coming, coming out now. Fine, fine. Head up. Yep. Regularly, we meet Tell four or me, five o'clock in the summer. It's quarter to four. It's daylight, you see. Yeah, Those are the most vulnerable day. times, dawn and dusk. So we'll say, meet and discuss what I'm going, going to do, what other wardens we've got available. So it's a well-organised thing now, and I, I'm very pleased that James is here. Will you be around all day? So well, I'm going to be up here. You'll I'll be, home, be up here you? all day. I've got some food in the boat. Yeah, but, um, yeah I'll be up here. Yeah. Don't worry. This is Needsall Point, and the salt marshes here are really a development from about 400 years ago, when silt ran off our lands in shore, and the introduction of the Spartina, which was introduced here somewhere around 400 years ago, by its strong roots helped sustain the, the land, so it formed all these marshlands here. Every day there's another sign, there's another thing, you know, the light changes, it rains one day, then there's the colour of the purslane here. They change with the seasons, and presently in September all this will be an almost russety brown, and what you see then, you'll see a marsh harrier coming through the same tone. It's an incredible sight, and that, more than anything, makes this an interesting place. I was the warden here, well, I have been for 47 years, and my job is really to have this place under constant observation so that I can report or can do something about any 
infiltration or any miscreant who would land or want to take eggs or want to do something to disturb the wildlife here. My job is, for, if possible, is to prevent that. When we try and sustain some of our colonies, you know, they do get a problem when we get a low bar barometric pressure. You know, the tide rises dramatically, maybe two feet or more, just in, in an hour. Really, what I try and do is to go around then on these high tides, or when this occurs like, uh, on a spring tide more than any time, and I can build them up with sticks and do a bit each day so that it's... And I've found that they'll stay there and stay with their eggs and incubate them all with their chicks. But certainly, we've saved masses of um, clutches of eggs by building the nest up. It's a very, a very important part of the job, actually. The biggest change here is the advent of the sailboard, the canoe, and the small sailing boat in everyone's hand, if you like. I mean, I've got several boats and love them, you know. But everyone's interest today is to get on the water. So our river here in this area in the summer is just crowded out with boats. And you know, I think, God, you know, I wonder what's going to happen this weekend, you know. Now, I remember one Sunday, I was doing a turn count here last year, and Suddenly I saw a landing. They got up right by a big day glow sign we have, looked at my glass, and I could read the name, Rum Buster, and I thought, oh, no, this must be a naval type, you know. So anyway, I got in my dory and charged off up there, and by the time I got alongside, the boat had gone back, tied alongside this thing, no sign of it. So I knocked, and I said, hi, Rum Buster, anyone aboard? And up appeared this figure, an age, well, past middle-aged man, and I said, excuse me, said who I was, the warden, my position, the law, the 81 Wildlife Act, you have broken the law. And I'm, I require by law to know your name, address, and your intention. And after a few moments of you know, being flustered, he said, Admiral Williams. I almost fell out of the boat. I said, I thought my first requirements of joining a Navy should be able to read. This is a veritable area for good food. I've got sea spinach here. I'm just going to show you. I've got some samphire here, marsh samphire. It's really great stuff. We've got sea kelp, we've got sea spinach, and we've got this, which is wonderful. How I like it best is raw, but there's another way is in an omelette. But I'm sure, well, I know locally it's eaten quite a lot from here to Limington way around, everywhere, Key Haven, but the Bewley Marsh is above all quite prolific growth. One of the first things I remember was being rescued by the Coast Guards, you know, just below our house. My brother and I, my twin brother and I, we had a sugar box, we got out with some paddles and, and the wind changed to northerly and we were blown right off out towards East Leap, which is way off us about two miles. My mother, in a panic, saw us and shouted at the Coast Guard, and they had to launch a boat and come out after us and retrieve us. Of course, to us, it was a, a wonderful experience. And of course, I, I think it's about my first seed trip, actually. We were about three. Good. Can I help, Gwendad? Oh, you put the food down there, we'll be all right. Yeah, go on then. You go, go and feed the chickens. Oh, hello there. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, isn't it lovely? Yeah, it's gorgeous. 
Oh, you're going to show me how to feed your ducks, eggs. dear? I haven't got the eggs yet. Have we got the eggs yet? No. My God. What dinosaur? Have those. What about I've that? got a great granddaughter, on, Jade. She's just three. Very often, I'm only just up, and Jade will appear and say, Are we going to feed the ducks, granddad? Are we, are we, as always, are we? I'm included in whatever the operation is, you know. And what are you doing, granddad? And it's, it's a great pleasure. A lovely little child. Well, here I've got my granddaughter next door, Gina. Then there is my niece, two doors to the west. There is my brother, two doors to the east. And then my sister and her husband, another two doors to the east. So I'm well supported, really. Often in the summer, especially on a weekend, everyone's off from school or work, and my granddaughters and their relatives all come down and say, we're going to the island, Grandad. Aren't we going to the Woodvale, Grandad? Which is a hostelry over at Gurnet. It is a dangerous crossing over the island. Right? On these springs today, it would be near enough five knots of tide. My boat's quite safe. I'm used to it. If it was very bad or blowing a gale, I wouldn't use that boat. I'd use one of the bigger boats, safer boat. For me, it's a fun boat, quite safe. I love the island, that's why we go there. We love it as a view, we watch it every day from here. But it's nice to go there and look back this side and have it. It's another vista, isn't it? Good trip over this morning, don't it? Lovely, wasn't it? <laughs> what about the old days coming here then? Nothing. I mean, today we motored, that's luxury really, isn't it? Or sailing. But there was a fact, when I was a kid, I was only about that high, in Exbury Village, there were the Williams, Captain Williams and his brother, and they used to, every Saturday, as long as the weather was good, they rode a 16-foot paddle punt, it was called, from Leap to, to Newport. They rode the cows and on up the Medina. They always did it if they could, so there was a bit of a rising tide, you know, to catch the market. How long did it take those old days? If they came on the tide, only about 20 minutes to cows and about another 20 up to Newport. 20 minutes? But truly, that was their stint, and it was sixpence per head return. They did that with these 16-foot boats. Prawning is it's a disease almost that we look forward to we make our nets and we go through this oh, ritual. Oh, you know. yeah. Well I don't think I've actually missed a year without prawn since I was eight or nine years old, apart from the war years. Yeah. Good. I might be able to share some of yours then if you get too many. We would go over with our father and friends in the boat and they would want to carry on when the tide was coming in so we were allowed to swim back to shore, which was some quarter of a mile sometimes or more.
Now here's some of the fruits of the sea from Lee. Excuse me, don't get splashed now, will it? Go. Get out. Wow. Now this is something peculiar to Lee. They're not big, but they're part of our life here. We wait a minute. But really, every August, this is something we all look forward to. As kids, of course, school holidays with something prawning. We knew we were going prawning. And, but now we've got older, and you know, and it's still a struggle. Who's going prawning? Who's going with me? Who's going with so and so? How many boats do we need to take? I'm going to try one. But God, I can feel these. Oh, lovely. You ought to try one. Can I give you one? I'm digging for ragburn this morning. Actually, I had a couple of drinks last night. And this is the easiest way to get rid of that livery feeling. It's one of the notable places for ragworms throughout the country, actually. They, they came from America, you know, on the bottoms of boats and things. And quite like the hardback American clam, they've multiplied. And here, this must be an ideal kind of soil for them, gravel and sand. And they just thrive in it. I'm hoping... I'll get a bass, or maybe two. I'm going to bait two hooks up, I'm greedy fisherman. I'm trying to do kill two birds with one stone today. I'm doing my spot of wardening, and I'm fishing around the sanctuary so that I can keep my eye on everything, hopefully get tomorrow's lunch. Well, I've promised these lads here, my son and this young boy over from Austria, that I'd catch them some fish. Hopefully, I'm going out there. Got it. Got him? Yeah. Yep. We didn't have a lot of luck yesterday, but we're going to try something else today. I've grabbed a net and my assist, noble assistant here, and we're, we're off up the river. See if we can catch some mullet. We're hoping. Okay, Pete? Yeah, we've got a Yeah. I think we'll drift for a while. I nearly did then. <laughs> I know. I won't. Here's one. <laughs> Here's a good one. If you get in there. It's deep, Rachel. Yeah, I can use the motor. <laughs> that was a bit of fun. I'm really self-supporting here in, in, in every way, apart from sugar and tea. Fish, shellfish. I've never short of it, and I've got a freezer, so I'm able to freeze it down, but sometimes I get a glut. I've got a lot of friends, so we swap fish for various things. I haven't been inside a butch shop for years, or a fish shop. How much have we got? Plenty of net left? Hang on a bit tight, if you like. Here's one right here. People have been doing this kind of fishing for years, for centuries. A thousand years ago, the monks did it here, in, in this river, particular river, but all our coasts, all around our coast, are mullet in the summer. They're a migratory fish. They leave in the fall or late fall. Here's one. I have friends who would say, people I went to school with, oh, I wouldn't eat those things. Mudfish, they call them all sorts of foul names. I said, they're not mudfish, they're delicious. Have you ever eaten them? Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to try. But the people who do eat them want to eat them again. We've got a, a nice one here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's nearly out, isn't he? 
grabbing back. <laughs> I've just left her astern slightly. <laughs> hang on for a minute, Andres. If you hang on to the net, we can't lose you. There he is, little boy. What about that? That's not bad. That's a good fish. Yeah, that's nice. Well, we've got a, we've got enough, haven't we, for us to eat this week? Enough to take. Can't be bad, can it? As, <laughs> I'm just going to show you some spitting special slow wine. It's a special vintage, this. I'm going to try it and bottle it when I get this thing. It's been lying around for a while, but I'm sure it looks right. It's got a beautiful colour. So, I'm going to try a little bit first and run it into these bottles. Beautiful. I think that was great. A bit more for me. But I must look at this. God, that's a wonderful colour. I must just try this. My word. Boy, that's lovely. Really is wonderful. God, came out just right though. Come on, should we yeah, get Jay? Give her a little cheer. Sir. Come on, you just waking up. Yeah. You come with me. What would you like to do? Would you like a little song? <laughs> do you want to go to sleep? Mm -hmm. You listen to Robin, you listen. Get that. Nice. Do you like that? Bom, 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 bom. Show it in which one? The buzzing. You love that, don't you? The buzzing of the bees in the cigarette tree. The soda water fountain. Where the bluebird sings by the lemonade springs in that big rock candy mountain. Was that good? Oh, in the big rock candy mountain. All the cops have wooden legs The bulldogs, they got rubber teeth And the hens lay soft boiled eggs You've got to sing this time. My philosophy is to give rather than to take. And I mean that in that sense. The joy I have is even a cabbage or a lettuce. I'm not a good gardener or a prawn or a fish. If I can give that at a time when it's best and see a smile and see satisfaction, that's the biggest pleasure of all. You like that? I can remember as a youngster being in Livington, a child gazing in the fish and chip window with no money. I said, would you like some? And his face lit up and I went in and got some, you know. And a satisfaction on that boy's face. You couldn't have had a better reward than that. And it's stuck in my mind ever since that. Thank you.